What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. We're going to move to another running back here. We just had Matt Waldman on. He really likes A.J. Dillon. Um, you, you do not. Uh, obviously, he made your all-avoid list over there on Twitter and on DLF. You have him pretty low. What's the cause behind the hate there? What's is what you got? What What's your beef with as, Dylan? As as the pod father, uh, Matt Kelly himself says, I don't hate players. I hate player ADP. And I'm not touching A.J. Dillon with the he top He didn't invent that. Picks. Let me just tell you that. Did he, did he not invent that? Well, he no, says it a lot. Of course he, he says does. it a lot, right? <laughs> but, Speaks um, a lot of things into truth that aren't true. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just I'm not, I'm not spending top 12 draft capital on what I believe is going to be a two-down grinder at best at the next level. Like, I don't see – can any of us envision can, – can he catch the football? I think sure. he can catch the ball, yeah. Okay, you can catch the football. I can catch the football. I think he can catch the football, but I, I think there's a big difference between catching the football and being deployed as a pass catching weapon, which I believe he will never be that. He will never be split out to go right. He's 250 pounds. Like, well, well, I mean, they did again, split him out a couple of times at Boston College. He does. He did have some decent hands where there was some people in his face and he, and he snagged the ball all right. I'm not saying he's a great pass catcher, and I'm not saying he's Clyde Edwards-Alaire because they're two – completely different players but if you're going to tell me that if like we talked about it last week if what if aj Dillon goes to baltimore and ingram's num days are numbered and you you can tell they want to pound the rock or what if he goes to tennessee and you got to wait out henry for a year and they don't want to pay him like what if the situation lines up where he's no longer a two down grinder he's he's the he's the feature of the offense then I will happily draft him in the standard leagues that I don't play in. Because he's still not going to be <laughs> somebody that I want in PPR. How formats. many? How many? If, if how many catches does Derrick Henry have to have to be that? All he needs to do is catch a cut like three checkdowns a game. Like he doesn't have to be the elite receiver that everybody you know is. I, I get it. That's what you want in dynasty and and out of your but players. Every, That's what you want out of all your players. You want them to be able to be elusive out of the backfield, but that's not everybody's game. Like, look at Leonard Fournette this year. He caught a ton of passes. Like, targets. Nobody, nobody yeah. thought he could catch the ball. Nobody thought Nick Chubb could catch the ball. Nobody – like, Ezekiel Elliott was never pegged as being this receiving threat. He still catches a decent amount of balls a year. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, the, the big part of your game. Of course it's a bonus if you're – uh, a guy who can do all of those things to give your Saquon Barkley. Sure. If you're Christian McCaffrey and you could be a slot receiver. Sure. But I mean, I think, I think it's, I think he does a okay. lot of things really well. Okay. <laughs> but Derrick I feel Henry, you on the ADP Derrick though. Henry, I do feel you on the ADP. Derrick Henry, Leonard Fournette. Who else did you name? Nick Chubb. What other big Zeke. running back did you name? Zeke, Zeke Elliott. You're naming the top fucking running backs in the NFL. There's a big difference between AJ Dillon and those guys. I think your more your more likely scenario is you've got a player who is not the rusher, the the rusher that a Nick Chubb, that a Zeke Elliott, that a Leonard Fournette is. I think AJ but Dillon is. Why can't a he be? A, why steps. can't he be in the Derrick Henry realm where you do where Derrick you finally Henry. feature him and you're going to grind the ball out? Because he's not Derrick Henry. Mm, I would. He's disagree. not Derrick Henry. I, I do not think he is the rusher. I don't think he is the athlete that – not the athlete because he's very athletic. To be 250 pounds, very athletic, very explosive, not taking any of that away from him. I think you use him in that role. If you're saying that he's going to be the Mark Ingram hammer, right, great. I think that's a good role for him. I just think the upside I, – I, a lot of people, I see them saying Derrick Henry. I just don't see that level of rusher – that I see in Derrick Henry, and even then, it took us what year four to well, get this out saying. of Derrick Henry. It took it took him to be the featured player of the offense, and that's what I'm saying. Like if he goes yeah. to a role where he can be that guy, like I think he can really succeed. Like he could be that, or he could be Jordan Howard. I you think the, I think the I think, if and I, I like to, Jordan Howard. I think that's a, yeah. I think that's a good player to have on your squad as as some depth. Like Jordan Howard dropped a bunch of balls one year, but he had a decent couple of seasons where he caught more a decent Absolutely. amount. It wasn't anything crazy, and and he can run between the tackles. And I think I think AJ Dillon's got some some very sweet feet. I think he's got a lot of power to his game. I think he's got good vision. I see, I think I think, he good, to I think be as a lot big of good as he is, pieces. 
as big as he is, he's not, he is, and I don't care about that run where he stiff armed the dude to the ground. If you go watch AJ Dillon, he is, is to be 250, that dude is not nearly as physical as I'd like him to be. Not at all. Like, he, yeah, but see, he's, he's, he's nimbler than you'd think he would be. Right. He's, no? he's got a, he's got another part to his game because if he was just that guy who was 250 and ran as hard as he could and just hit the hole, y'all boys would be bitching about like, oh, he's just 250. He's just this dude who runs into the line and he just uses his size. He's just power. Like, He's got more than that to his game, and he does have the ability to finish with power drink. <laughs> where do y'all got him ranked at? I got him 10. I don't think I don't, that's I, – I, I, I don't think 10 is, like, disrespect. Where, I got him – I got him – so I got, I got Taylor Dobbins, Clyde Edwards, Swift, Akers, and then right below those two guys, I got Dylan and, and Moss probably are around in the okay, same so area. Okay, so what? What's that, like seven? You got six, him seventh? Seven. Yeah, six, yeah. Six, seven. Okay. Just and, and you know, obviously, <laughs> obviously all, like Taylor Dobbins, C, Clyde Edwards, and Swift, I want those guys on my team for sure. I'm taking them in the top half of the first round, bar none for the most part. And then now A.J. Dillon at the end of the round after some of these receivers that we just went and we get into that third tier of receivers, now I'm interested in taking A.J. Dillon. Like there's a lot of these receivers that I feel really good about that we just talked about that I would definitely rather have than A.J. Dillon on my team. Unless he lands in a spot like, you know, uh, like we just talked about Baltimore, or maybe he lands in Tennessee, Tennessee because they franchise the old boy and they just, hey, we're going to load this yeah. up with a cheaper guy. And, you know, if the landing spot's great, then I could maybe start justifying. But I don't get, we don't get super caught up in landing spot like crazy over here. Um, yeah. Try not either. Anyway. So that's. Well. When TJ Duckett is just a two-down grinder, we'll, we'll get back on the show. We'll, we'll, we'll recall this one. But I, I sure. get it, man. He is, to be that big, he is an explosive athlete. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right. I All think right. one of the right. – We're coming one, around. Early in his A.J. <laughs> Dillon, though, he was talking about draft capital. Like, you're, if you put yourself in a rookie draft um, – and I'm talking about what Ray said just now. So like, and then Casey alluded to it as well. Like the biggest thing about it is if, if the situation is not right, uh, if, if your NFL team is losing, AJ Dill is not going to be on the field. So he's not going to get you any points for your fantasy team. If the situation is not right, you don't want to have that type of person, that type of player in the wrong situation. So like, I, I think, you know, you guys are both kind of going in the right direction. There's too many good wide receivers that are safer, that are good assets, that are no matter what going to be going to hold value and likely gain value as this thing plays out. If A.J. Dillon finds himself in the right situation in one of those A-plus situations, then we can really talk about where he's going to be in the back half of the first round. But if he doesn't, because even if he does find himself in one of those situations, obviously running backs get injured quickly in the NFL because that's what happens. But if he's behind, yeah. if he's behind Derrick Henry, he's behind Derrick Henry until next year. If he's behind Mark Ingram, he's behind Mark Ingram until he gets hurt or next year. Um, you know, just because I mean, first of all, because the running backs gonna, I mean, because the uh, the quarterback's gonna take half the rushing attempts in Baltimore. But um, you know, there's I think there's there's room for AJ Dillon in a rookie draft but you got to get past some of that upside in the wide receiver, the value department and some of those wide receivers first. Yeah, I agree. So how many times have we been playing fantasy, right? And you're barely winning. And then the Patriots or some fucking team like that gets the ball with three minutes left. And then James White, who you're playing sure. against is on the field. And somehow in two minutes, he accumulates five receptions for 60 something yards. For sure. 11 hey, here it is. PPR points. Here it is. It was Danny Woodhead. It was Woodhead, one of the Chargers. That was my boy, and he kept he kept, he would get he would get five catches in a, in a row before <laughs> halftime or at the end of the game. And that's and even with Derrick Henry, even with Nick Chubb, that's the frustrating part is when, when you need those receptions, right? Derrick Henry's not going to be on the field in the two minute drill. Like he, like we beg, like we're praying, please just put twenty two in the game. If you're losing, and it's and it's if you're losing, and it's Deion Lewis, right? So, um, but you know, conversely, if the game script is right, Derrick Henry's on the field and he'll he can take eight straight carries, right, and pick up sixty something yards. So, I, listen, I get it. I'm and a bigger TD to, upside. I'm prepared to be wrong on AJ Dillon. Oh. Uh, I'm, and, that, and that's fine though, because I put it out there. I just, the, the, 
I just don't like to chase those archetypes. I would prefer something else. So I feel you, and I I, I was hesitant on both. Eight. I'm more hesitant on Zach Moss, uh, and I've been and I'm I'm hesitant on both of those guys because in the past. I've definitely been a little bit more bullish on those style of guys, and I've definitely weaned off of it a little bit. But I think AJ Dillon's a little different. Um, that's that's really sure. my only. And, and like I said, I'm not going to go ahead. It's all about ADP, and and yeah. I agree with you.